Hey guys, welcome back to another 3D printing video. And in this video, we have the LotMax CH10. So in this video, we're gonna unbox it, set it up, and do some prints. All right, so let's get started. Alright guys, so this is the box that it comes in. We can see here there's a picture of what the printer looks like. Here we have some slogans, lots of ideas, maximum creation. So yeah, pretty decent sized box. Not too large, but not tiny either. So here are the dimensions, 32 by 32 by 55 centimeters. And according to the shipping label, it's 22 pounds, which is about 10 kilograms or so. So let's go ahead and open the box. Now you can see here I have some brown tape and I think this is because it was opened by customs and I actually have another piece of red tape here. So I think there was an inspection on this box. So technically not a big deal, just happens I guess in customs sometimes where they wanna check it. So right on the top we have a box and a manual that greets us. And this is quite a nice manual, it's high quality. And there's definitely a little bit to read here. It talks about all the parts and what they're for. Screen operation, leveling. So yeah, very nice and detailed manual. Really goes in detail how to use the printer. Very nice. So all of our accessories are in the box and we're gonna go through this in a little bit. So we have really nice thick foam. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the whole thing out. So it's coming out in one piece. All right, so it's encased in this dark foam all around, so very well protected. Let's go ahead and pull it up. All right, well, this is the best packaging I've seen in a resin printer so far. Very good execution. And here we can see the top of the printer and it's looking really nice. So I think the best way to do it is put the top back on and start with the bottom. And once we pull that out, we'll have some feet to set it on. I know it's strange to talk about packaging foam, but this is quite impressive. <laughs> Very nice. So now we can go ahead and flip it around. And now it can sit upright and we can remove the top foam. And there we go. And now we can see the whole printer. So first impressions, it looks quite nice. It's got a really nice build and a design to it. So there is a door here. And if we lift it open, you guys can see how that lifts. And does go all the way back and we have more foam inside all right so on the very top we actually get some resin and it's lot max branded 0.25 kilograms of it very nice all right so let's get this foam out of here and here we can see the build plate let's go ahead and remove that by unscrewing this little bolt here and the build plate just slides out so it is all matte black even on the bottom and it is all metal all right very nice all right so it looks like this is the last of our foam here and here we can see the tub. Now this printer has walls all around it, so getting to the resin tub is a little bit harder, but technically not a big deal. And this is what the resin tub looks like. So it's a nice chunk of aluminum, and we have a little pore spout on one end of it. And this is what the bottom looks like. So all these bolts are holding this film. And we have two little dimples on each side where the screw bolts tighten into. So before I take a closer look at the printer, let's go ahead and see what's inside this box. All right, so the first thing we get is an extra piece of the FEP film. So that is the clear film that goes onto the bottom of the resin tub. So that's really nice they included an extra one. So here we have a bag of things like the strain filters, some gloves, a plastic spatula, a metal spatula, and a little brush. A set of Allen wrenches and a USB thumb drive. And there's probably some stuff on there. So we also get an ethernet cable that's 1.5 meters long, our power cable to plug into the wall, some masks for breathing protection, and another box which includes our power adapter. And it is 12 volts 
five amps. And so that's everything. All right, so let's take a closer look at this printer. So we definitely have a really unique design in the walls and how it opens. So we have some pretty heavy duty hinges here. And so this whole top piece and the front part of it just comes up. So we have a steel frame all around. So the whole printer is metal. And then we have these windows on the top and then both sides and the front. And they are tinted in this orange and that's to help prevent UV light from coming in. So when you open the door, it doesn't actually stop anywhere here. It kind of just keeps going and falls onto itself. So if we go inside, we can see we have a bracket here. So here we have our lead screw that goes down through the printing arm and then the bottom. And all of this is metal. And we can see down there we have an optical sensor for the Z-axis switch. Now the thing that I'm noticing right away is this whole main Z-frame is loose. So it looks like maybe something from shipping loosened up or I guess it's possible that it was shipped like this but the whole frame piece here is moving so it looks like we're going to have to go underneath the printer to see if we can tighten it up. But let's go ahead and keep going down here. So we have the tub and it's strapped on by these two bolts. Here we can see our screen and this is where the images are projected into the resin. So on the very front we have the LotMax logo and here we have our touch screen. So it looks like a pretty decent size and below that we have a power button and it does look like it glows. So to the right side of the printer we have some venting and our USB port and this is where we're going to plug in our thumb drive and on the left side we just have the venting. So let's go ahead and close this lid and let's check out what the back looks like. So it's pretty clean and then at the bottom we have a pretty large fan. So here we're going to plug in the power from the adapter. This is our ethernet interface plug. And here we have information about the machine. So the model number, the power, which is 50 watts, the build volume, which is 120 by 68 by 155, the machine size itself, and the weight of 7.8 kilograms. And on the very bottom, you guys can see we have pretty nice looking feet. And they got foam pads on the bottom of it. On the bottom of the printer, we can see there's another opening here with a fan. So I'm going to go ahead and take this off since we need to tighten those Z-axis frame bolts. And we should be able to see some interesting things inside. All right, so we're on our last bolt. And there are eight of them, two on each side. All right, let's carefully open this up. And we can see all the workings. All right, guys, so here's the interesting part. So we have this huge heatsink here with that fan, and this is the bottom cover. And this is our UV lights right here, our LED lights. So they actually glow into this funnel right here. It's a metal funnel, and they spread the light from there. So they're using less LEDs and a funnel to kind of spread the light evenly across the LCD screen. So that's quite interesting. I normally don't open up these resin printers because I mostly don't really know what I'm looking at, but it's still very interesting to see how it all works. So we have our main board here. Can't really see it well, but and there's a USB plug that's going to our port on the side and then that ethernet plug also. There's our side fan and here's our power button and our LCD screen on the front. But what we're after is back there. And I don't know guys if I'm gonna be able to film it, but it's way back there. You can kind of see, maybe you can see, there's a bolt right there on the top. And then there's another one that should be below that. There's four bolts back there that hold that whole Z frame. Unfortunately, they're really hard to get to because they're right beside this fan. I can definitely feel that they are loose. And it might be easier for me to take this fan off so I can get to them. It's probably what I'm gonna do. All right, so now the fan is loose. And I can kind of move it out of the way and get my wrenches in there a lot easier and tighten those bolts up. All right, guys, so I got a really good clear view here of where the bolts are. And you can see there's four of them right there. So I got them really tight and the fan actually goes right here. I'm going to put the fan back and tighten this plate back on and we should be good to go. All right, so with that little hiccup out of the way, let's go ahead and plug the printer in. And I already got the power adapter plugged in and we can see it has a little blue light. Let's flip it around. And let's go ahead and hit the power button. All right, so it lights up. And we get a little logo. And there we go, that's our main menu. So on the main menu, we have tools, system, and print. So let's take out the tools. This is where we're gonna do our bed leveling. So we have a manual movements of up and down, calibrate, and set to zero. And then we have a stop. So if it's doing anything you wanna stop it, click it there, so. So here we have a system, information about the printer, network connection, service information, and two languages, looks like Chinese and English. And that's pretty much it, guys. So it's very simple. All right, so the next thing we need to do is level the build plate. Now, before we do anything, what we want to do is we want to loosen up these four bolts on the bracket. And so our adjuster is loose and can move around. And then we're going to set it back into our frame, tighten this bolt on the top. 
and then we're going to go to tools click on manual and here we can see we have a few controls you can choose the amount you want to move and then up and down and then we have our home button right here so i'm going to click that and that's going to go all the way down and as it's going down i'm going to use this manual sheet of paper that goes in between the build plate and the screen you can see but our build plate is all the way down and the paper is loose and there's a huge gap between the build plate and the screen so that means that this needs to go down lower so we need to offset it so what we're going to do is we're going to choose our most incremental adjustment and we're slowly going to go down so i'm going to go ahead and put the paper in between and then i'm going to head down so obviously we we need to go a lot more so i'm going to go down a little faster I can see now that it's finally touching. Change it back to this and we'll go down slowly. So you want to go down quite a bit, but not too much obviously because keep an eye on these bolts with the sheet of paper underneath the bill plate. The next thing you want to do is tighten these four little bolts on each side. And while you do that, you want to press down on your bill plate just a little bit so it doesn't move as you're tightening them. So I'm going to do the front left one and then I'm going to do the right back one. Then we're going to do the other two also. Alright, so now we should have a little drag on the paper. And you guys can't really see, but there should be a little gap right in between the bill plate and the screen. And it should be quite even. So once we do that, we're going to go back and we're going to click set to zero. That's going to be our new home level. So we're going to click set to zero and it's going to ask us to reset the position. Confirm. And that's it. And if you guys notice here, we have a calibrate button. And what that is, this is going to turn on our UV lights so we can do a little test if everything is functioning. So here's going to be on for 200 seconds. We're going to click next and it's going to draw us that pattern on the top. And basically that's just to check if the LCD screen is working and our UV lights are. And as we can see, it's working and we have a nice little pattern of a rectangle. All right, so we can put our tub back in. We'll just slide right in. We're going to tighten these little bolts and that should be good right there. So before we pour in the resin, let's go ahead and see if there's any test files on this thumb drive. So we're going to go to the side of the printer and plug it in. And it does go upside down. So let's go back into the print. As we can see, we do have a file here that says ring and a couple more, another ring and some kind of deer or something. All right, so we do have some test files to print. Let's go ahead and open our resin. And by the way, guys, if you've never printed resin printers, you got to be really careful because resin is really toxic. So you don't want to get it on your hands or breathe it. So make sure you wear gloves when you're handling it and a mask. And where you're printing, you have very good ventilation. So since I'm just pouring it in, I'm not going to wear my gloves. Shake it up just a little bit. Not too violently because if we do violent shaking, we're going to put air bubbles into the resin. So it looks like this is a yellow. So that should be quite interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and pour some in. All right. So we're going to put it in about half of it. And I'm going to close it up right away. So let's go ahead and click on our ring. And we have a little preview here of what it's going to print. We're going to push play. And there it goes. So it looks like our z-axis is going down. To the resin to go. All right. So that's our first layer has started. And on the screen here, we can see what our layer looks like. And then below that, we have the percentage that's finished, the file name, the estimated time that it'll take, which is 2 hours and 29 minutes, the time that has passed, and the layer we're on. So we're on the first layer, and there's 553 total. So here we have a stop, a pause, and settings button. So if we click on the settings here, we can adjust some of the parameters here. So we have five bottom layers that are going to be exposed at 90 seconds. And then everything after that is going to be at 8 seconds a layer. And to adjust it, you just click on it, and you can put in anything you want. So I'm just going to leave everything like it is. So it looks like our first layer is done, and it's now going to our second layer. So yeah, it appears that everything is fine, and we are at the bottom of the build plate. And the great thing about this printer, since the UV lights are in enclosed cone, there's no leakage of UV anywhere around the printer. So that could be a plus. So in total darkness, you wouldn't see any UV lights. Only lighting is from this button and the screen. So let's go ahead and wait for the next layer to come up. And there it goes. And you heard a little like a thump. And that's the print sticking to the film. And it pops off as it goes up. So that's usually a good sign when you hear a little thump. Not always you'll hear one, but sometimes you will on some printers and some don't. But yeah, so far everything is good, and besides having the little issue with that Z-axis, everything is going quite well. So let's go ahead and close this lid, protect the resin from UV rays. And the interesting part is, is this tinted acrylic glass is still clear enough where you can see it quite easy. Alright, so, so far so good. I'm going to let this thing print, and I want to go ahead and try a feature out and see if it has it that I think is quite important. 
All right, guys, so the printer is boogieing away and it's doing a layer every eight seconds now. And we can see it going up and down. Now, the feature I was talking about is actually when you push this pause button, does the build plate go up enough where you can see if your print has stuck to the build plate? So, some printers have this, some don't. Let's see if this one does. So, I'm going to go ahead and click that pause button and let's see if it'll raise up high enough. And look at that, guys, it actually does raise up high so you can see right there in the middle our model started and it stuck to the build plate and I feel like this feature is really important for any resin printer because you know you're not able to see if your print has started or not until it's too late and you know it's almost done depending on what you're printing so if you're experimenting with new resin or just new settings you know you'd like to know if your print is stuck and I'm very happy to see that this printer goes up on the pause where you can see underneath the build plate alright to continue the print we'll just push play and it'll go back to printing. So yeah, it looks like everything is good. So I'm just gonna let it do its thing and we'll be back once it's done. All right, so our first print is done and it looks like it was successful. So it did take two hours and 30 minutes. So let's go ahead and confirm that and it'll just go to the main menu. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut the printer off. So we're gonna need some gloves and they did include a pair, actually quite nice quality. They're not ultra thin, they're actually quite thick. So, so let's go ahead and grab our other tools. Now you'll also need some alcohol. So make sure you have some before you start printing. That way you can clean your parts and also clean the models. All right, so let's go ahead and release the build plate. And I don't know if I mentioned it guys, but the build plate actually has tapers on the top. So all of the resin pretty much just drains off. So there's no issue floating on the top of it. So, so you will need some kind of pan or something like I have here. Uh, this might be a little large. You could use something smaller. But yeah, we're just gonna grab our alcohol and we're gonna spray it on the model here a bit. And they do include this little brush, which is a great idea. I haven't seen this yet. Kind of clean the model with it. So we have a couple scrapers. We can use either the plastic or this metal one. I think let's go ahead and use the plastic one. So what we're gonna do is we're just just gonna gonna try to tap it off there there we go it actually popped off quite easy so it was holding on very good but it wasn't to the point where it wasn't removable and since we're printing more models I'm gonna put this back in the printer and we'll clean off the ring a little more so there are supports here we have them on the bottom inside the ring and you just push on them they seem to pop off quite easy so while the resin is not cured completely it's a lot easier to take these supports off go ahead and pop the bottom off and unfortunately I think I chunked off a little more than I should have. Now if you have some kind of cutters kind of like these, it's probably a good idea to just snip them off. But yeah, overall looks good and turned out quite well. Small ring, but it does fit my pinky. Alright, so I'm going to let that dry. And the best place to dry it is outside in the sun. But you don't want to put it outside right away. You want to wait a little bit until the alcohol completely evaporates off of it and then set it outside. Because if you set it outside and it's still wet, it might burn it. The alcohol will evaporate too quick and burn the resin. And then it will have little white spots everywhere. Alright, so let's power the printer back on. And we'll go ahead and print the other model. So we do have another ring and a little deer. I'm going to print these out. And then we're going to go to the computer and slice our own models in Chitsu Box. All right, so here we are at the computer and we have our thumb drive. So here we can see the three files that are included. Then we have the software and the user manual in PDF form. So let's open the software tab. And here we can see we have G2 Box for Mac and Windows. Since I'm using a Mac, I'm gonna install the DMG file. All right, so now that it's installed, let's go ahead and open it up. All right, so when you open your Cheetu box, it will look something like this. So we have the build platform here. Now, what you want to do first, if your machine is not set, you're going to go to settings right here. You're going to click on add new printer. So the CH10 is not in the list, but you can use the orange 30 here if you want to try that, or you can go to default. And if you use default, I named my profile here, CH, and you can edit it right here. And so here's all my machine settings. So we've got the resolution, the build volume here, LCD mirror, nothing different under resin, and then print. We we have 0 0.05 layer height, six bottom layers at 80 seconds exposure, and then eight seconds after that. Five millimeters for bottom lift distance, and then five for lifting distance. Bottom lift speed is 60, lifting speed overall is 120, and retract is 120. So, so yeah, pretty much that's it. And I'm just using this standard G code here, and I do have the anti-aliasing enabled at level four. So. so once you set all your machine parameters, you're gonna see your build plate. 
So let's go ahead and throw a model in there. We're gonna to try to print this little lizard thing. This is a really good print for resin printers because of the complexity. But as you guys can see, it doesn't fit on the build plate. So right here on the side, you have some navigation buttons. So here you can move the model around, rotate the model, and here we can scale it. So they have a hot button for scale to fit. If we click that, the model goes to its maximum positions. And so there's more options to play with here. Like you can hollow out the model and then dig a hole in it. And here on the right side, we have more navigation. So we have the view here. Let's see if you want to just see the top front and then here we have a sliding bar that shows us every layer if you want to preview your layers here's our file and we can delete that from here so we have two tabs here there's a second tab this is for making support so this gets a little more complicated but there's a lot of good videos out there if you want to learn how to use cheat to box but yeah once you're happy with where the model is all you're going to do is click the slice button and it's going to slice it and once it's sliced we can see here the preview computer's a little laggy but this is every layer and there's 600 and 53 layers so so here's a little more information of how much resin is going to take which is four milliliters the time it'll take to print two hours and 33 minutes so yeah quite simple so if you had your printer connected to the network you could send it just like this or you could save it to your desktop or straight to your thumb drive and you're going to be using the file name of dot cbddlp so once you click save it's going to make the file and so now our file is finished and we can go ahead and put this on our thumb drive and then take it to the printer to print. So yeah, that's a little quick view of how to get started with Cheetah Box and hopefully this helped out. All right, so I'm printing away and everything is going great. So what I want to do next is change my resin from the yellow to some gray I have. And so what we need to do is to save our yellow resin by putting it back into the bottle. So if you have a little funnel like this, it helps to so set that down. And then we're going to grab one of the filters, strain filters that are provided. And the reason you want to do this is because you don't know what's in that resin and you don't want to contaminate your good resin in the bottle. All right, so let's get the tub out. So try not to get your fingers underneath so you don't get the bottom dirty. And if you guys remember, we do have a little spout right here. So and it flows pretty good. And so this procedure will be pretty much the same for cleanup as you're going to drain it. And then you're just going to clean this up with alcohol. All right, so now we can close the lid. So if you're going to keep printing, then obviously you don't have to clean this out perfectly. A little bit of dilution with the next resin is not going to make a huge difference. But you do want to get the old resin out as much as you can. So putting some alcohol in there and then just mixing it will dilute it. So after stirring it for a little bit, and if it looks like it's diluted quite good, I'm going to go ahead and pour it out into the sheet. Wipe it off. Make sure you didn't get the bottom dirty and we can go ahead and put it back into the printer. All right, now I can give it a final wipe just to kind of get the majority of the alcohol out and whatever resin's left in there. And also we need to rinse the build plate and get the yellow out of it. But yeah, if you were finished printing, you would just clean all this up, wipe it down, and that's the whole cleanup process. So we're gonna give this thing a quick wipe and we're good to go back into the machine and ready for our next print, which I'm gonna use this gray so a little trick if you want to get every drop out of the bottle is you can just pour it on the bill plate and it'll drip it straight down into the tub. All right, and so now we're ready to print with our new color. So I'm going to go ahead and print some more models and then we're going to take a closer look at them. All right, so let's take a closer look at all these models we printed. So here I have two of the rings that were first printed and that was included with the printer. And they turned out quite good except for the part where I broke them. I think they're supposed to be standing on a stand, but in any case, overall, they look very nice and accurate. And one thing I did notice about this printer is that the surfaces seem to be quite smooth overall. So here's the other ring. Also turned out very well. Lots of good detail. Kind of hard to tell on this yellow, but overall I'd say very good. So the other thing that was on the SD card was this deer here. And this thing really is interesting because it has these huge antlers. And surprisingly, they all turned out perfect and there's no issues there. So you print it just like this. It has like a little platform on the bottom. And there are two little plugs here that printed with it because it is hollow. And the plug is right underneath here. Overall, very nice and smooth print except for a little piece right here. You can probably see there's a little layer line. So it seemed like something happened here. The model got shifted or something got cut up on the Z-axis. But it's not a terrible line, but it is there. So initially I thought maybe there was something wrong with this area here. But as I printed more models, there's not a problem here. Just for some reason, this model ended up having that line. So, But yeah, as far as the surface finish, it's very nice. Let's see you guys take a look at the top of his head here. 
you can barely see the layering it's definitely blended very well and it, you can almost not tell it's there so very nice and impressive print so the rings and this deer here came on the sd card and the rest of them i sliced in chitu box so let's go ahead and look at this little froggy here so the frog also turned out very nice very smooth it's quite amazing how much difference there is between a fdm style printer and a resin printer you can see how much more smooth and accurate the resin printer is and there's no issues with stringing or anything like that so yeah this little frog turned out excellent and it looks really really good so again you can see the layers but they're quite subtle so yeah after even printing my own slice prints i realized that this printer has very good finish quality to it and so our last yellow print is this lizard thing and it also turned out perfect and you guys can see this is a pretty complex print with all these little holes and his body and he's completely hollow so the only surface area is just his little paws here and the belly that sticks to the bed so i had no issues whatsoever with models sticking to the bed and then popping off real easily after that but yeah if we look here on his head we can see it's really smooth and all the details are there and everything looks perfect so yeah excellent print all right so after that i put in my own resin and i've had some reasonable success and then because some of the prints had a little issue and i'm pretty sure that was because of my resin now this ball here turned out perfect and I did not take it off the support so it's hanging on there but if we look at it really close hopefully that'll focus you guys can see the layer lines just barely there's my thumb for reference yeah an excellent print and very strong too so I also decided to print these little figurines here so they're quite small so we can kind of see the detail and if we take one of them we can see a little closer what the detail of it looks like you can see the pattern in the shirt the face details the hair not the sharpest I've ever seen, but definitely there. I don't know if you guys can see, but everything is somewhat a little bit smoothed out. Kind of like his helmet there, you can see it's <laughs> very shiny. You practically can't see layer lines on it. So. so yeah, very nice. Same thing for these other two. Also great detail. Very good solid prints. So yeah, if you love to print models, especially miniatures, this printer can definitely do that. Alright, and so the another thing I printed is this weird geometrical shape here. I think it's supposed to be like a neuron or something, but in any case, has a lot of complicated shapes in there that would be very hard to print unless you had a, a resin printer. Now this print did have an issue and it's kind of right here. It's all melted away and I'm pretty sure this is because of my resin. This resin that I'm using here is a mixture of two other resins. That was a mistake I made a while back and it's fine for printing thicker things but when I start printing smaller thinner things you can see it kind of melts away in some areas. But overall it's still finished and where we can see it's good it's totally fine. So a lesson I learned is not to mix two different brands of resins together even though you know they're the same color because they do have different characteristics which could react differently. And you guys can see how this is a little lighter than the rest of my prints. But this model just shows what you can do on a resin printer which is quite fascinating. There's certain shapes that you would not be able to make unless you printed it on a resin printer. Alright guys and so for our last print here we have the Eiffel Tower. So this is a print that I like to print because it's also very complicated and it has a lot of things we can look at and plus it shows us how tall we could print on this printer because this is the maximum height here. Well I guess this is not the maximum height but it's quite close but it is the maximum width also here. So so this is as wide as it can go almost as high as it can go also. So, But with this print here what's interesting is this railing here. A lot of times this railing does not print correctly or melts away but on this printer here you guys can see it's very solid so that's quite impressive and that's what I've noticed with this printer is that all the models come out really strong so whatever it's doing with the exposure times it seems to be carrying the resin very well in the process of printing and we can see in the middle of the tower on the bottom everything turned out very nice lots of details everywhere and there's nothing weird going on in this print it's literally perfect in every area including the top here and these little holes here are see-through I don't know if you guys will be able to tell or not, but pretty much all the way through the top. Very good accuracy overall. So yeah guys, these are all the prints I was able to print. And overall, I'm very happy with how they turned out. And I don't really see any issues with this printer except for one. And that would be this Z-axis frame, the main rail. So, And it technically is not an issue overall, but I did notice that if I just touch it a bit, it's a little bit more on the flimsy side. And it doesn't seem to affect the print much, but I would like to see this a little bit more rigid where it's not flexing as much. But other than that guys, you can see the printer is very capable and puts out really nice models. The UI is very simple and intuitive. Also, it is a very quiet machine. I'm going to bring my microphone to it. 
So as you can hear, it's only a subtle fan noise. And it does have a very reasonable print volume, which can accommodate miniatures and other medium to small size printing. So overall, I think this is a good machine. The surface finish is smooth, details are good. And also I'm really happy to see that it has the feature when you pause it, it raises back up because I feel like that's quite important. I did like that they included some resin with the printer so you can get started. You don't have to worry about getting your own resin. So yeah, if you want to get into resin printer, this might be a great place to start. You have everything you need to get going. So if you're interested in this printer, I'm going to leave some links in the description. Check that out. And if you enjoyed this video, then hit that like button. If you want to see more 3D printing stuff, I got a lot of reviews in the playlist. So check that out. And there's a lot more to come. So stay tuned. All right, guys. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.